I want to take a few minutes today, and I want to talk from the subject title, Automatic Doors. And we're talking about David, who is one of my favorite biblical characters. I always take my glasses off and I can't see them. <laughs> see, Mike, I don't know why. I can't see a thing. So, 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 so David, who, who is one of my favorite biblical characters, right? right. And, and I love David because David was never the same. David was always changing. Right? So, so the first time we met David, he was a sheep herder. Right? He was the youngest of all of his father's sons. He was just in the fields. He was worshiping and singing songs. Right? A, a bear came and tried to attack the sheep. David had a slingshot, kills the bear. Lion comes and tries to attack the sheep. They had a slingshot, kills the lion. Yeah. Right? And so we knew David comfortably as the youngest son of Jesse, as a sheep herder in the backfield. Next time we see David, uh, uh, he is with his brothers on the fighting line uh, against Goliath, right? And, and, and David changes, and now David is the one that takes on Goliath, right? And when he takes on Goliath and wins, now David becomes the warrior. David becomes the captain of Saul's army. He's no longer a sheep herder. Now he is the captain of the army who defeated Goliath. And so we know David as the captain of the army, but then he changes again, right? Then Saul is trying to attack David. David has to go on the run, and now David is a rebel for 15 years hiding out in the desert, right? On the run from Saul. And we know David yeah. as the rebel. But then David changes again, right? And now he comes back, and he becomes the king over Israel. He's the second king over Israel. And we know him to be the king. We know David, he's the king over Israel. Then he changes again. And has a son, and now he is the father of the third king of Israel. Now he is the father of Solomon. Yes. And so we see David move from being a sheep herd to being king. Yes. And what's interesting about that movement is that is that if you tried to define David by when you met him, yeah. That's right. you would miss what he was becoming. Yeah. If, if, if you tried to define David by the moment you encountered him, yeah. then you'd be calling him a sheep herder when he was now a king. Yeah. You'd be calling him a warrior where he was now a rebel. You'd be calling him a rebel where he was now a king. And so we can never allow to be defined That's right. by the moment we encounter. Amen. But we must define the moment we encounter. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I like David because David is always moving and even in this text, even in this text, David is, is on the move. Yeah. Now, please understand, David was sent to the field where the army was gathered, not to fight Goliath. Right? That was not his assignment. Right. right? His dad didn't say, David, your brothers ain't doing too well. I need you to go on down there and take care of this for them. Mm -hmm. Right? His dad didn't say that. His dad said, take this cheese and this bread <laughs> and drop it off to your brothers. Let me know how they're doing. Come back and report to me. Right? Right? Now, now David being the youngest son, and some of y'all uh, uh, might have this condition. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, when, when you're the youngest, you don't tend to listen all the way. You like to do things in your own way. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. right. And so here's David who gets to the battlefield. And he sees his brothers and sees uh, all the men that he knows in fear. And he starts to ask questions. Why are y'all scared of this giant? What's, what's going on here? He's pressing and pressing and pressing until finally word gets back to Saul that David is asking questions. And David goes before Saul and says, listen, I will take care of this for you. Now, now, now I, need you, I need you to understand. David, at this point in his life, is 15 years old. 
right? And he's talking to, to, to Saul, who is the king over Israel. He's looking at all his brothers who are adults, and he's telling them that he can defeat this giant that's over seven feet tall, right. a 15-year-old. Right. And yet Saul says, well, if you, you think you can do it, go ahead and do it. And Saul gives David his armor, gives him all of his clothes, and David tries to put him on and fight. And, and David says, I can't fight, but we're wearing your stuff. Right. So David takes it off, and he goes, and he fights, and he defeats Goliath, and we know the rest of the story. But I want to back up just for a few minutes today. I want to talk about three things. And, and, and I'm specifically, specifically, specifically talking to my young people. Okay? This, this sermon is for y'all. All right? All right? I want, I want, I want y'all to hear this. this. This is important for you to hear. I want you to get this. This is for y'all. This is for y'all. The first point I want you to understand is that you were never meant to fit in. I want you to hear me say this. You can't fit in. Stop trying. You were never meant to fit in. I want to show it to you in the text. So here comes David. Here comes David, right? He gets on the battlefield, right? He, 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 he's talking his way through, right? He finally gets up to Saul, who is the king. And Saul says, okay, well, if you're going to fight Goliath, you're going to need to wear my armor, right? And so Saul, who is king, puts on his armor on David, right? David is 15 years old. He's a child. Right? And he's wearing a king's armor. And he's trying to he's trying to go fight Goliath wearing somebody else's armor. That, how much sense does that make? You know how heavy that armor was? Right? And so here is David, and David is about to go into war trying to look like somebody else. But he stops. And he takes off the armor. And wears his regular clothes and is able to defeat Goliath. Here's the thing I want you to get. If David had tried to wear Saul's armor, he would have been defeated. That's right. Let me tell you why. Number one, if he had tried to wear Saul's armor, he would have never been, he would have never looked for the rocks to defeat Goliath. He would have been trying to use Saul's sword. Now, if you can imagine a 15-year-old trying to use a sword, a king sword, right. up against a giant with a bigger sword, <laughs> he would have been defeated. Yes. But the fact is he took off the armor and used what he know, knew how to use. God has given each one of you something special. Amen. It is unique. It is different. It doesn't line up with everybody else's stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the only way you can be successful is if you use what God has given you. Yeah. You, you, you weren't meant to fit in. Yeah. If, if you tried to wear Saul's armor, you would get beat. You would lose. Right? Because Goliath was prepared to fight Saul. He was prepared to fight those very armor. He had no defense ready for a slingshot <laughs> and a rock. That's right. Sometimes we can underestimate the thing God has given us. Because it's not as shiny as everybody else's stuff. It's not as polished as everybody else's stuff. It's not as big as everybody else's stuff. But it is exactly what God has given you for this season for this moment, and if you just use what God has given you, you will win every single time. Amen. Yes. Okay? Yeah. You, you, you were not meant to fit in. You were not meant to fit in. What you got is different. What God has given you is unique. Yes. Stop underestimating your slingshot. Yes. Stop underestimating the rock. Stop underestimating your journey and your experience. All of that stuff God is going to use for his glory and for your good. Yes. But you can't fit in. You can't fit in. One, one, of, one of the major challenges that I we have every single day, every, I mean, without fail, is dressing day. 
<laughs> every, every, I mean, this, this, is, this is an ongoing competition to see who's going to win first, who's going to give out first, right? Because David, my, 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 my younger, my boy, is convinced that he does not have to wear a collared shirt unless he's coming to church. He is convinced that the only time he has to put on a collared shirt is when he's coming to campus. He ain't coming in, and so that's the first question. Are we going to church? Are we going to school day? Are, are, are we going to church? No, we're going to school day. Then I don't have to work out, right? And so every morning we have this, we have this battle with whether or not he has to wear a collared shirt. You understand? And, and, and here's the thing. David is clear about how he wants to look. Right? He is clear about what his image needs to be. And four, y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. I don't know where he gets it from. Goliath. Did you hear me? Every Goliath 
needs a David. Yeah. That's good. Every Goliath yeah. needs a David. The question you have to ask yourself is, are you that David? Yeah. If you are encountering a Goliath, the question you need to ask yourself is, are you that David? Here's how you know. You know you David if when you encounter the Goliath, your instinct is to go after it. You know you are David if when you encounter a Goliath, your instinct is not to be comfortable and to, and to, and to fade back. You know, you're, you, you know you're a David if when you encounter Goliath, your instinct is to run in and continue to do what God has called you to do. Right. Every Goliath needs a David. Yeah. Are you that David? Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah, come on. Y'all hear me? Listen, yeah. listen, listen. You, you are elevated. I want y'all to get this. You are elevated. You are elevated. You are elevated. Not by the quantity. Not by the quantity of the stuff you encounter, but the quality. Okay? Okay? You, 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 you are elevated not by the quantity of the, of, the, of the struggle you have to encounter, but the quality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Give me an example. I had a cousin. I had a cousin. Uh, um, um, went to uh, Warwick Community College. Back home. Back in Eastern Shore. Warwick Community College. My cousin at Warwick to absolutely every course offered in the community college. I mean, every course, every course, right? Right, right, what was supposed to be a two year degree. My, my, my cousin was there for six years. My cousin was there. Every single course that was provided, my cousin took. Now, now at the end of the he was working, he was working. I mean, he became a nurse, he became a, a truck driver, he became, he, he could change electricity. Like every single course that was offered, my cousin took. Right? Now, now at the end of those six years, when, did, did he get a PhD? He got an associate's degree. Right? Because it's never about quantity, it's about quality. You are not promoted based on the quantity of struggle and trials you encounter, but you are promoted based on the quality of struggles you encounter. Does that make sense? So if you keep going up against the same demons and the same nest and the same people and keep surviving, well, God bless you. But, but God is, and wants to elevate you. But when can you go up to, to go up against some new Goliath? When can you go up against some new hurdles? When can you when can you go up against some new stuff? Once you get to the point where you can change the quality, then you can change your direction. Does that make sense? How many times are we gonna have to go up against the same thing? When is it gonna be time for us to change how we interact? Every Goliath needs a David. Every Goliath needs a David. Are you that David? Are you ready to keep moving forward? Are you gonna retreat in fear like Saul? Are you gonna blame others like Eliab? Are you going to stand and, and not do anything like the other children of Israel? Are you going to sit from your home and watch what's going on like Jesse? Or are you going to move forward and try to conquer this Goliath like David? Every Goliath needs a David. I believe y'all are that David. I believe y'all are ready to attack and to fight everything we see today. That you're not comfortable with sitting still. That's right. That you're not comfortable with, with just taking it. That you're not comfortable with saying, well, this is the standard quo, this is the way it's always been. I believe we are raising church a generation of Davids. I believe we are raising a generation of Davids, a generation of young people who are ready to fight, ready to move forward right. with what they see and to not be comfortable are still. Yeah. Are you that Davids? Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. Right. Number one is this. Number one is this. You must be comfortable with not fitting in. You were never designed to fit in. You can't, even if you try to fit in, it's just, it's just, it's just not going to work. Right? There, there is such an anointing upon you, such a gifting inside of you. You were called to stand out. You were never called to fit in. That's number one. 
Number two, not only, not only are you not able to fit in, but then number two, you must always keep moving forward. Yeah. You gotta move forward. I don't care how, many, how much stuff pushes you back, how many times the enemy is trying to stop you, you've gotta find a way to move forward. Yeah. And then number three and I'm done. All right. Number three and I'm done. Here it is, here it is. Look for the street. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Look for the stream. Look for the stream. Look for the stream. Look for the stream. Look, if, if, if you don't get anything else, if you don't get anything else, get this. Look for the street. Look for the, the street. Here's the reality. All of us, all of us will face mountains in our lives. Oh, that's right. All of us will come up against some warfare in our lives. And here's the crazy part about how they used to fight, right? So the enemy would go on one side of the mountain, and the people who were fighting would go on the other side of the mountain. And they would run down into the valley and kill each other, right? right? And, then, and then try to climb back up the mountain and go on their ways. And they would do it in waves. So they would kick the first crew down the mountain to go fight, right? And the second crew, the third crew, the fourth crew. And so, and so the valley became this place where the war really happened, right? The valley became this place where there was all this, this, this anger and rage and hatred and stuff going on. The valley became this place that was tense, right? And it was from the mountaintop that you could see what was happening in the valley. And oftentimes you would get stuck and don't want to run into the valley because you can see it from a, from, from, from a, a different perspective. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can see what was happening from the tops of the mountain, and so you said, oh, I ain't going down there. <laughs> oh, I ain't going oh. Right, right. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw the, uh, the uh, commercials for the, uh, the, uh, the uh, new movie, uh, Us. Yeah. Right, right. Just, just the commercials alone. I was like, I ain't Don't worry about the valleys. Don't even worry about Goliath. But I have provided a stream 
Yeah. You gotta be willing to move beyond that which is comfortable. Yeah. You gotta be willing to step outside your comfort zone. <laughs> the very rocks that we use to defeat Goliath were right in front of them for 40 days and 40 nights while they were getting pumped by Goliath. <laughs> was right in front of them. Right in front of them. The, very, the very rocks that would make David become king yeah. was right in front of them for 40 days yeah. and 40 nights, and yet they could not access them <laughs> because they were too busy looking at Goliath. That's right. Yeah. How much have you forfeited? Because you were too busy looking at Goliath. Yeah. Yeah. How many rocks that would have solved your problems and rocks that would have given you revelation and rocks that would have taken you into a new level of, 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 of your life. How, how much of that have you missed? Because you were too busy watching yeah. the mountains. Mm -hmm. Too busy stuck in the mountains. Mm -hmm. God says if you're willing to look for the stream, mm -hmm. what you are in need of, I have already provided. Here's the, here's the great thing about God. Great thing about God. Is that whenever God sends a Goliath, He's already got a David on the way. Amen. God, God won't let a Goliath exist That's right. without a David coming. Now get it. So, so, so God didn't provide and, and, and create your mountains and your valleys without also making way for your streams. Oh, Do y'all hear me? Yeah. In the middle of your mountain is a valley. In yeah. the middle of your valley is a stream. I'm done. 